Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about ISO. Now, ISO is the third and final factor in your exposure triangle um, and what ISO effectively does is it increases or decreases the sensitivity of your sensor towards light. What you generally do is with your aperture and your shutter speed that controls both um, exposure and composition while ISO is very much um, just based on exposure. So what happens is as you up your ISO, so going from 100 to 200 to 400, 800, um, what happens is, is your sensor effectively through some clever electronics becomes more and more sensitive to light. Now what this does is as it becomes more sensitive to light it also generates more and more noise. Now noise in photography is those little sort of speckles that you see um, on images and it's not always pleasing. It can be and we'll get to that but generally speaking it's not really what you want in an image. Now as a result of this it would generally be the last thing that you'd alter while aperture and shutter speed as I said that you play with all the time. Now there are instances where upping your ISO can have great effect on the composition or at least the, the feel of an image. So imagine a nice black and white photograph, right? Um, in black and white photographs it can be very pleasing to have a little bit of grain in there. Um, and that is due to the fact that grain gives it a little bit of a, of a film look that digital sensors usually can't replicate. The same if you are, say for example you're shooting um, street photography right and you're shooting in very very dim scenarios um, like at twilight you know sun is setting that kind of thing or even at night you know and you're literally just shooting by street light upping your iso can give it quite a gritty look that otherwise you won't get you know just because of that grain that gets added um, and of course the fact that generally speaking you know with your shutter speed and aperture you can't get to you know scenarios where you would get correct exposure without altering your um, ISO in situations like that. Now don't let all of this talk about grain put you off um, pushing your ISO as far as it can. Back in the day with earlier um, digital cameras and also um, with film cameras ISO was quite a big deal and it was quite a quite a negative. Um, you couldn't push the ISO very far because the moment you start pushing it your whole image would just fall apart and grain would just take over. Nowadays though technology has really advanced like leaps and bounds and you can get cameras now where um, if you push the ISO up you can take pictures or video or whatever um, in scenarios where you can barely see your hand in front of your face um, and yet with the ISO all the way up you can see clearly, um, yes it's going to be grainy but you're going to get a usable shot um, and at the end of the day that's what ISO is really all about. Um, it's about in really tough scenarios giving you a shot that you can use. Imagine scenarios where say you're shooting for a magazine or a newspaper you know and you have to go into buildings or anything like that you're not allowed to use flash you know um, basically where there's limitations put on your photography ISO gives you that freedom to open up and still get usable shots to complete your your assignments okay guys so that wraps up our video on ISO and the effects thereof um, in your photography that also concludes our series on um, the exposure triangle if you enjoyed this video, uh, don't forget to drop us a like and comment if there's anything else that you'd like to know or any future videos that you'd like to see. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you very much.